get started. We're going to, of course, open up in prayer. How many excited to be in Bible study? Sister Keisha, we good? All right. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. How many excited to be here? Okay, okay. That, see, look, look, look. The shyness going away. She got the smile. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Praise God. Don't worry about it. Um, one thing you're going to learn about me, you know, soon enough is, is that um, there's never going to be a dull moment in Bible study. I think more people have more fun in Bible study than they do um, in church on Sunday morning. Um, Brian. I need you to, to take all the kids to children's church, please. Yes, make sure she goes too. Brian, go that way. Rachel, go to mommy. Now. All right. They're excited to be in Bible study too. Amen. Amen. Um, I'll let the kids know. Also, I have um, kind of sort of almost set up. I got some some stuff I'm going to be doing for the kids here um, going forward. Some incentives um, that I'm trying to get set up. I got my candy bowl just came in. And what I'm going to start doing is... Um, I'm going to start giving them candy whenever they learn their Bible verses, um, when they're interacting Sunday school, children's church, Bible study, um, when they can do a recap of the lesson from the last week. Also, they get double the incentive if they bring somebody with them to church. Amen. Amen. So, yes. So, um, I just got to... Huh? Yes. So, so that's going to happen. All right, I had to turn off the fire for the uh, for the food. The food was still, um, fire was still on. All right, so um, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we'll get started with uh, Bible study for tonight. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, we love you and we honor you. We thank you for your goodness, O oh God, and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done for us, O oh God, and all that you're doing even right now, O oh God. God, how great and how excellent, O oh God, how majestic is your name, O oh God. And Lord, we give you glory in this house, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done for us, O oh God, all that you're doing even right now, O oh God. God, is because of your grace, O oh God. It's because of your mercy, O oh God, while we're here even right now, O oh God. God, we should have been dead, O oh God, sleeping in our graves, O oh God. But because of your grace, O oh God, you saw it fit, O oh God, for us to see another day, O oh God. And Lord, we come here, O oh God, with hearts of gratitude, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for not killing us in our sins, O oh God, because God, we deserved it, O oh God, for the wages of sin is death, O oh God. But the gift of you, O oh God, is eternal life, O oh God, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Lord, we ask today, O oh God, that you remove, O oh God, every distraction, O oh God, remove every hindrance, O oh God. That your good and perfect will be, will be made manifest in this Bible study lesson today, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you'll illuminate your word, O oh God. Let your word, O oh God, come alive to the hearers, O oh God, today, O oh God. And let us not just be hearers of your word, O oh God, but let us be doers also, O oh God. God, I pray, pray O oh God, that your presence, O oh God, will permeate this atmosphere, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that lives will be transformed, O oh God, even by the teaching of your word, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you remove, O oh God, every dull ear, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that you remove every stony heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, let your word, O oh God, become a lamp unto our feet, O oh God, and a light unto our paths, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God, in our lives. We'll be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so just a quick recap. So we've been going on a journey, um, the road to Calvary. We've been talking about Jesus uh, on his way to his destiny. Amen. We talked about how when Jesus began this journey, Brother Brian, how you doing, sir? Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. May God bless the USA. Amen. Um, when when Jesus was going on this journey to Calvary, um, there was what's called the triumphant entry. It was 
was the last time that Jesus entered into Jerusalem um, before he was going to be executed. And the cool thing about it is Jesus knew that this was going to be the last time he was going to enter before his execution. Amen. But he goes because it's the time of Passover. And it's customary that you go into um, a certain city and you celebrate your Passover. And, and um, when he's entering in, he tells his disciples to go and get a donkey and bring this donkey and a colt. And I'm going to ride in on this donkey. Now, some people may wonder, well, was Jesus broke while he rode a donkey? Well, no, that's not the reason why. Uh, we're not going to talk about how much money Jesus did and did not have. Um, but the reason why he rode in on the donkey is because it's symbolic. When a king rides in into, into a city on a donkey, it's because he's entering in, ushering in, or offering peace. All right? When a king enters into a city on a horse, he's coming to initiate war. So I'm thankful to God that he came in riding on a donkey because he came in to bring peace. Not only did he come in to bring peace, you'll notice during this period of time, as he's coming in, people begin to take off their coats and lay them down on the ground. This is where we get the red carpet effect from. They lay down their, their, their clothes on the ground, and Jesus begins to ride through, and they have palm branches in their hand. They begin to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, thou son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to God in the highest. Amen. And we know that the word Hosanna means save us now. So these people are crying out to Jesus, knowing that Jesus is king and crying out to the king to save them. Now, when the king rides in on the donkey, when Jesus rides in on the donkey, they're expecting the king to come in and overthrow the Roman gov government with force. Well, Jesus didn't come to do it in that way. So because of this, that same cry that's crying out, Hosanna, 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 is going to be the same crowd just a few days later going to be crying out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So after this, they go into, um, into um, start to commemorate the Passover. And as they're commemorating the Passover, um, I need you to understand that Jesus is the Passover. Um, but while they're commemorating the Passover, they actually do this a few days early. The reason why they're doing the Passover feast a few days early is because Jesus is not going to be present on the day of Passover. Anybody know why Jesus is not going to be on, present on the day of Passover? Do not raise your hand. Anybody know why Jesus is not going to be present on the day of Passover for the feast? No, nope, not because he's fasting and praying. Go ahead. He's not in a grave. No, nope, he didn't ascend yet. What was that, Brian? Nope, nope, I know what you're saying, but nope, that's not why. The reason why Jesus is not going to be present on the day of Passover is because he can't celebrate Passover is because he's going to be hanging on Calvary and he's going to he's the Passover lamb. He's the one that has to die because he's the only unblemished lamb that is feasible to take away the sins of the world. That's why he says, let's do this a little bit early. Remember when John introduces Jesus for the first time, what did he say? He says, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Because Jesus is that lamb. Hold on one second. We'll talk about that. A little bit. We'll, we'll talk about that after. OK, so so Jesus now he comes in and when he comes in um, into into Jerusalem um, after that, of course, he's they're, they're having a Passover uh, feast after the Passover feast, after they're good and full, they've eaten the lamb, they've eaten the the the, the um, they've eaten the bread, uh, unleavened bread, they've eaten the bitter herbs, they've done all of that. You know, people like me ready to take a nap, like some good old girl like that, I'm ready to go to sleep. But Jesus, what he does is he pushes away the plates, and he does something that Christianity struggled to do. And you know what he does? He goes and he takes a towel. He takes a, a, a basin of water, and he wraps a towel around his waist. And Jesus, being the King of kings and the Lord of lords, 
puts on the servant towel and begins to wash the disciples' feet. And Peter says, Master, what, what are you doing? He says, well, well, you know, even though I'm the master of all, I must, I, I must serve each and every one. I have, to, I have to do this. He says, no, Master, don't wash my feet. He says, well, if I don't wash your feet, you have no parts of me. <laughs> and then Peter says, well, 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 Master, don't just wash my feet. Wash my head. Wash me all over. And, 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 and Jesus began to explain to him that, that though I wash some of you, there's still some of you that, that are not clean because he knows that one of them is going to betray him, talking about Judas. After he washes their feet, um, then he, he says, now, this is a, a new, new covenant I'm going to give unto you. That word covenant means testament. Remember, now you have the Old Testament. You have the New Testament which is the old covenant, and you have the new covenant. Covenant. This is where the new covenant is going to take place. Jesus is going to make a new covenant with his people. You follow me? So he says, here's the new covenant. He stands up, and he takes the bread, and he breaks it. He says, this is my body broken for you. He begins to pass it around. Then he takes the cup, and he passes the cup around. He says, this, this is my blood. Drink. Do this. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Notice now this is the first and the only time you're going to hear Jesus say that. Why, why is that so important? Because you notice now, Jesus never says, this is my birthday, do this in remembrance of me. See, he got sad when I said that. He's like, wait a minute, pastor, what you trying to do with Christmas? <laughs> Uh, so, yes, Jesus said, this is what I want you to do and remember to me. And after this, then we, of course, we know Judas at this point, um, after they take the, the Passover, he leaves. Hold on one second. Um, after, he, after this, he leaves, and, and he leaves because he's about to go talk to um, the, 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 the religious council to, to try to betray uh, or tell them where Jesus is going to be. Not try to betray, but to betray Jesus. Right after this, they go into the garden. When they get to the garden... This is a familiar place. This is the reason why Judas knew where Jesus was going to be is because Jesus came to this place frequently. Very often he came to this place. And he came to this place to pray. So it's not like it's a one-off thing with Jesus to pray, pray, but this is something that Jesus did often. I know this may sound like a mystery. I know this may sound like kind of, you know, like, what do you mean? He, people actually pray often? <laughs> yes, people People pray often. Praise God. So Jesus, he goes to the garden. He, he goes to pray. Um, when he goes to the garden, he leaves eight of his trusted disciples at the entrance of the gate. And then what the Bible says is he takes three um, other disciples a little bit further with him. And then he gets to a point, he says, I want you guys to stay here and I want you to watch. The Bible says he goes a stone toss away and then he goes and he begins to pray, um, which kind of shows his little... Uh, different dimensions of, of when God begins to lead us to a different place and get us closer to our calling, that there's people along the way we're going to have to start leaving behind. Even though there are people that we love and even though there are people that's, that's in our circle, that's close to us, there's still people that, that, that can't go everywhere that we go. So notice now, praise God, notice now that, that as Jesus gets further, his three trusted go to sleep. Jesus doesn't go far away. He's a stone tossed away, which is probably about four rows back. And Jesus is over there praying. And he's not praying like how sometimes we pray. You know how sometimes we pray those, oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know you can hear my cry. Just hear me crying right now. Lord, I needeth thee now. Come save me. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> no, he didn't pray one of those prayers. <laughs> But when Jesus was praying, he was praying fervently, intensely. And the reason why you know this is because the Bible says that as he prayed, that, that he began like sweats of droplets of blood began to come from his forehead. What was happening is blood vessels that was in his forehead began to burst because of how loudly and intensely he was praying. Now, why is this so important? Because his disciples, the ones that are most trusted, are visiting the land of Nod. They're asleep. So Jesus, he gets up and he wakes him up. He says, could you not watch? I, I Don't get offended when I say this. I know this, sometimes I say this part, people run up out of here. Jesus said, could you not? But I said, don't run away. I, some of y'all inching closer. Could you not pray but for one hour? 
Pastor, you mean to tell me people can pray for an hour? Yes. Yes. Do you know, do, I know it, it may, and, and I'm not knocking anybody if you don't pray for an hour, praise God. Pray for five minutes. The more you pray for five minutes, you'll start to pray for eight minutes. After you pray for eight minutes, you'll start to naturally just start praying for 10 and 12 minutes. The more you pray is the more or the longer you'll learn how to pray. You know why? I'll give an example. As much as me and my mom butt heads, we, we talk a lot. You know why? We've, we've built a relationship. The more you talk to a person, the longer or the more you build a relationship with a person, the easier it is to talk to them. Sometimes we don't talk to God for a long time because we don't build that relationship where we can talk to. So we don't find any commonalities. We can't find, it's hard to find that connection. But Jesus, he's praying. He said, could you not pray but for one hour? He says, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch and pray. He goes back. And, and when he goes back, the Bible says, of course, we know the disciples go back to sleep. But the Bible says now that, that, that at this point, an angel came and strengthened Jesus while he was praying. Strengthened him. If an angel of the Lord come and strengthen you right now, what would you do? Be jumping up for joy and then what would you do? What would you do? Anybody, what would you do? An angel of the Lord come and get you, huh? What would you do? <laughs> Call us. I got to tell somebody. Well, here's what happens. <laughs> I'm calling somebody. <laughs> Something just happened. <laughs> here's what Jesus does. When, when an angel of the Lord comes and strengthens him, it doesn't strengthen him to go carry his cross, but it strengthens him to pray more. The Bible says that he began to pray more intensely. When strength came, it strengthened him to go deeper into the burden that he was feeling. And that's when he began to cry out, um, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He was asking, if it, if it be your will to take this cup, this cup of suffering I'm about to take. Correct. Here's the thing that I need you to understand. Jesus had to die in the garden before he can go hang on Calvary. What do you mean? Jesus didn't die. Yes, he died to his will. And the reason why we struggle a lot of times in our walk with God is because we refuse to die to our will. But Jesus says, I got to die in the garden or I'll never make it to Calvary. Because you'll notice now as Jesus is praying, everything he's praying is he's praying against his own will. Why? But you're saying, but I, I, I know the thoughts. Well, but pastor, I thought you said Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. If it's God's will that he dies, why is he fighting with his will? Because he's still 100% man. And man does not want to die. Man does not want to suffer. At least a sane man doesn't. Show of hands. How many people in here want to just get punched in the face like a thousand times right now? Not a person in here. I know sometimes we may say we want to just because of things that we've gone through in life and we just want the suffering to end, but we don't physically want to go through that. We just want to end the suffering that we're going through. Oh, I know it for a fact, and we can talk about it afterwards. Afterwards, we'll, Brian, 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 li no, Brian, listen to me, listen to me. Li no, stop, stop, stop. L look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at, you're not looking. Listen to me. After Bible study, you're not going to talk. Okay? After Bible study, we'll talk. All right. So after this, after Jesus prays, he gets up. He wakes his disciples up. He says, you might as well just <laughs> notice now. He wakes them up. And he says, you might as well sleep on. And Peter probably wiping his eyes like, well, Jesus, if I might as well, why would you wake me up? He said, because the betrayer's here. Because your job was to watch and pray. <laughs> I know you're like, well, what, what, okay, the betrayer said. But here's the thing. The reason why our, our, our society is dying the way it's dying is because men are busy sleeping. Because men were supposed to be the watchmen that sound the alarm when problems and, 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 and the enemy comes. But they're sleeping and they don't see the enemy start to creep in. So they don't sound the alarm. 
So Judas comes, and, 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 and of course, we know that they come and they arrest him. We talked about how, how at this point they, they get to Caiaphas, who is the high priest, and, 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 and they, they give this mock trial. And during this mock trial, um, Peter denies Jesus thrice, three times. The cock crowed twice. And Jesus was right there next to him, where to the point where the Bible says after he, after he denied him that last time, Jesus looked at him. And as soon as Peter looked at Jesus, he began to whip bitterly, and he ran because of the shame that he was feeling. After this, he was led to uh, Pontius Pilate, and, and from Pontius Pilate, he was led to, to Herod, and from Herod, he was led back to Pontius Pilate. And during this process now, um, I want you to understand that while Jesus is going through this trial, the priests are out in the field doing something. Can anybody tell me what are the priests doing? No. What were they doing to prepare for Passover? What were they looking for? What kind of lamb? What were they doing to the lamb? Nope, they weren't preparing yet. Here's what they were doing. While Jesus is going through trial, there were priests that were in the field examining the lambs because they had to pick a specific lamb. The lamb couldn't have spot and it couldn't have a blemish. And it had to be the firstborn. Now, notice now, during this whole period of time, you're like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Remember, Jesus is the lamb. And Jesus in, is, during trial, they're inspecting the lamb. And every time they inspect the lamb, Pilate says, I find no fault with him. You want to kill this man, but to me, he seems innocent. I don't see anything wrong with him. I find no fault with him. So the same time they're going through the ritual, of inspecting the lamb, the lamb that was that was slain from the foundation of the earth is standing right in front of him. Here's the here's the thing I need you to understand because sometimes we get caught up in Christian uh, ritual the same way the priests did, and they're so busy going through the motion that they miss the king when the king's standing in front of them. No, I don't, I, I I I don't know if they didn't know. Because here's the reason why I say I don't know if they didn't know, because the Bible says that they loved the praises of man more than they did the praises of God. I believe that they knew he was the Christ, but they didn't want to acknowledge it because Nicodemus, he, 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 he was a part of the Sanhedrin council. But he came to Jesus in secret. He says, we know that you're of God because the things that you're doing, no man can do. We know that you're different. So there's things that Jesus did that identified him, but they denied it because they didn't want to lose, they didn't want to lose their titles. They didn't want to lose their position. Just like some churches, they, they, they know the truth. They know about baptism in Jesus' name. They know about receiving the Holy Ghost, but they don't preach about it. There's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of denominational churches, that, um, Baptist churches too, that, 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 that refuse to allow people to speak in tongues in their church. Even the pastor themselves, some of them have the Holy Ghost. But they can't stand behind a pulpit and talk about it because they'll lose their title of pastor. I'd rather hold on to my title of pastor than preach what's in the Bible. That is exactly why. And the problem is, oh, we'll talk about that later when we get to doctrine. Just, see, you try to take me there. I saw that trick. Nope, not this time. You ain't going to get me. Praise God. And I said all of that to say, guess what? Now we're time for our lesson. All that was a review. It took us 30 minutes to do a review. <laughs> so today we're talking about Jesus being beaten. Somebody turn for me, please, to Psalms 103, verse 1 through 4. Psalms 103, verse 1 through 4. Verse 1 through 4. All right. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgetteth all my all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. In Psalms 103, this is a Psalm of David, and David begins to prophesy about this one who's going to heal every sickness and every disease. 
We know that that person is Jesus. And, 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 and part of the homework was to find the scripture in the book of Isaiah that talked about what Jesus did and find it also in the New Testament where, G, where, where, where one of the disciples talked about Jesus fulfilling that. Um, we're going to talk about that here in a second. So during this period of time, this road to Calvary, this is where Jesus is beating, beaten. And this is not a chronolog in chronological order by any stretch of the imagination. The reason why is because Jesus wasn't beaten just on one occasion. But during this whole process, Jesus was being beaten. I know a lot of times we think the only time Jesus was beaten when they took the whip and they just started whipping. No, friend, he was beaten every step of the way. On the way to Caiaphas, he was beaten. After he was leaving Caiaphas, um, they blindfolded him, began to punch him in the face, and began to spit on him, began to slap him. I'm not talking about a regular man. I'm talking about God in flesh. It's how, this is how he was treated. The Bible talks about how, how, how Jesus was beaten to the point where he, his face was unrecognizable. They said there was nothing in him that was desired, meaning he looked so bad, nobody even wanted to look on him. Talking about Jesus now. <laughs> so this isn't really spelled out in chronological order um, because, it's, it's, like I said before, it's not a one-time occurrence. Um, John chapter 19 is, is part of what we're going to look at here. John chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. John chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at a, a few different scriptures here. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto him, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that he may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And by our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee? And have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greatest sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, Crucify him. If thou let this Crucify man go, him. thou art not Caesar's friend. <clears throat> All right, pause for a moment, and then we're going to come back. All right, so um, we talked about this also last week, that, that it was really a political move between um, Pilate, why he's going to offer Jesus as, um, as a sacrifice, how he's going to offer Jesus um, to be crucified. Um, because at this period of time, the Jews and the Romans, they're in odds, and, and right after um, Pilate sends Jesus to Herod, and Herod sends it back to to Pilate. There was an agreement to have Jesus killed, and during this agreement, the Bible says that Herod and Pilate became friends. Well, um, in John chapter 19, verse 1 through 7, we talked about how Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Anybody know what that word scourged means? What, what does that mean? What is a scourge? Scourge. Scourge. Scourge, I'm sorry. Scourge. He was. That's when they. That's when they took 
um, this whip, and they began to beat him. Now, the scourge is a, is a specific type of whip. I know a lot of times they say it's like the, 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 the whip with the cat of nine tails or whatever. No, friend, it's not that. No, 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 uh, Brian, I got this. Um, it's, it's a whip, and this whip has different branches on it, and this whip has, it's, it's not the, um, it's not, let me explain it. So this whip, um, it has um, bones in it. It has glass in it, and it also has hooks in it. And the reason why it ha it's set up this way, hold on one second, Brian. The reason why it's set up this way is because this, this is a mode of torture, and they used to give people during this period of time, it was one of the most gruesome ways for a person to be tortured. Um, the only thing that was more torturing than this was the cross. And they used to give, the Romans used to give this as a type of execution, where the person that used to do the whipping, if you receive 40 lashes, and that person that you're whipping with 40 lashes lived, the person that was administering it would be sentenced to death. So it's not like they were just given a spanking like that's your child, but they were trying to literally beat the life out of you. Now, Paul gives some insight to this, where Paul, the Bible says, Paul was beaten, Paul says that I was beaten like this five times, 39 stripes save one. I mean, uh, 40, 40 stripes save one. So he's beaten 39 times, he was beaten five times, 39 whips. And what takes place now is, let me use this for, just for an example. So it was a post that came out of the ground like so, and what they did was they would take shackles on your wrist and they would tie it to you like this. So you can't cover up. How many has ever seen the movie Passion of the Christ? Passion of the Christ was the closest thing to this suffering that Jesus went through. To the point the actor that was going through this process as he was getting beaten, even though he wasn't getting beaten for real, one of his ribs was broken in the process. Now, the reason why it has these hooks and this glass and these bones in it is because it wasn't just to put welt marks on you, but it was to dig into your flesh. And then when you pull it back, it's ripping flesh from your, your body. Now, I want you to picture this because Jesus received 39 of those. So there's one person on this side, and there was one person on this side. So they're taking the whip, and mind you now, he's hung over like this. <laughs> and they begin to whip him. And they're ripping the flesh off his back. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So after they're done whipping him, they take him and they take a robe, as he was mentioning, and they put the robe on him. Now, this robe was um, to, to mock him as king, so they would dress him in a purple robe. Now, back in this time, the robes were made out of satin or silk, thin material, but it was nice material. But here's the thing about silk. It absorbs blood, and it clings to whatever it is that it's absorbing. So they, they take this, this robe, they put it on them, and then they take the crown, and they put it on his head, and they take a, a reed or a staff, and they begin to to knock it down. It's not, it's, not like, it's not like the rose thorns. You know, the small little, oh, I got an owie. No, it's more like a pomegranate uh, thorn, and they're long like stakes. They're about this long, and they're sharp. They're so sharp that if you accidentally step on one, it'll go straight through your foot. They put this crown, they, 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 they take it, they mend up these branches, and they twist it in a way that it makes a crown. They place it on his head, and because they're afraid that they'll poke themselves, they take the reed, they begin to Knock it down on his head. So now it's being forced to a scout. So then after this takes place, they begin to taunt him and make fun of him, taunt him as they're punching him. The Bible says in, in Isaiah 53, I believe it is, is where at this point, come here for a second. You're going to be Jesus for a minute. Praise God. Praise God. And what they do at this point is this is where now, now, how many ladies? How many have ever been in a fight before and, and you got your hair pulled? Does it hurt? It hurts. So here's what happens to Jesus. I want you to think about how it hurts. They took his beard, and the Bible says they ripped it from his face. 
they ripped his beard from his face. So not only was he beaten, so then after they do this, now here's the thing I need you to think about. So he has on his robe. After they're done talking to him, they're like, okay, take him back to Pilate. You know what they do with the robe? So, so, so here's what they do, because the, the, the robe now at this point is saturated, it's, it's being filled with, with the blood. And you know what happens when you have an open wound? What does your body naturally start to do when you're bleeding? It starts, it starts to try to uh, make a gel to stop it from continuing to bleed so you don't bleed out. So what it's doing is it's caused your body is going through a healing process, so it's taking the robe that's on it, and it's starting to stick to it because it's trying to stop the bleeding. So then they take the robe and they snatch it off of them and tear the scabs off and reopen those wounds. Then they bring them to Pilate. You go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. Bring them to Pilate. Pilate's looking at him. Now, Pilate was warned by his wife, let the man go because God troubled her in a dream. So he says, listen. It's customary that during this period of time we will release one person. They say, give us Barabbas. Barabbas is his real pronunciation. Give us Barabbas. Now, Bar- Barabbas was a thief, he was a robber, and he was a murderer. Sound to me like Satan. Because the Bible says that Satan cometh not forth but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Riots. He, he, he was more, yeah, he was, he was a rebel is what he was. So they say, give us the one that's killing us and stealing from us and kill the one that's been healing us. So Pilate now, Pilate says, here's what I want you to do. Bring me, <laughs> bring me a bas- basin of water and let me wash my hands because I want to clean my hands of this. Like that's really going to clean you. No friend, that's not going to clean you. All right, I kind of. Spared through a lot of this because I was almost out of time. Go to Mark chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. I'm sorry, 1 through 15. Verse 1 through 5. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests um, held a consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered and said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they they witnessed against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing. So Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whosoever they they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with them. Who had, who had committed murder in the, the insurrection. He's a murderer. Verse 8, And the multitude cried aloud, um, crying aloud, began, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answering them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for... Why did they, the chief priest deliver Jesus? For what? For envy. The whole reason why the Jews want to kill Jesus is because they're jealous of him. Not because Jesus is God, but because Jesus is doing something that they couldn't do. When Jesus was 12 years old, he went into the synagogues and he was teaching and he was answering questions. And they marveled because because he spoke as one that had authority. These old men are looking at this 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 adolescent teenager, and they marvel because a teenager had more authority than they did. Why why is that? Why do you think Jesus, as a teenager, had more authority than the scribes and the Pharisees? I don't think it had anything to do with being well versed in the Scripture. It's because Jesus was living in Scriptures and they weren't. You can't walk in authority of something that you're not living. Because the Bible said that that oftentimes they would pray out in public just to be seen. They weren't praying because they want to be close to God. They just want to be seen by the people. But Jesus, the Bible says that they were envious of him. 
just get them off the scene so that we can we can so that we can get our popularity back. Because hundreds and thousands of people are following Jesus. The scribes and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the religious council, their, 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 their membership was falling. Their collection plate, their offering plate was, we're, we're, we got to do something. He's affecting our tithes and offering. Praise God, we, we got we, we to get rid of him. We, bless God, we can't have nobody preaching the truth. Holiness. You mean to tell me people still teach holiness nowadays? You mean to tell me you you when you're saved, you can't drink, you can't smoke, and you can't cuss? What? Get out of here. You ain't never going to have nobody in your church. <laughs> but Jesus did. Jesus had thousands of people following him. Thousands. Here's the thing. Let me just pause one second in this Bible study teaching for a moment. Let me just take a break real, real quick. Here's the thing that, that this preacher is never going to do. I'm never going to change what's written in the word. I'm going to preach letter by letter, precept upon precept. I'm going to teach it and I'm going to preach it. You know why? Because I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm preaching this message so lives can be changed and transformed. I want every seat in this place filled, but I'm not going to compromise the gospel to fill this house. It's not happening. I'm not changing. I'm not. Jesus gave too much for me, for me to change. And, and to negotiate and to compromise. Not doing it. Because Jesus is about building a church, not a crowd. And a lot of times you see a lot of churches going up. You're like, you're like, like, man, bless God, how come that church, they, they just started last week. They got a thousand cars in the parking lot. You know why? Because there's a difference between wheat and tares. They look alike, <laughs> but some don't have substance. Show of hands, how many people has ever seen a garden before or ever worked in a garden before? Plants, rose bushes, anything. You ever seen it? You, you know how that works? Now, now tell me, how many people do you know that's been a farmer that's planted weeds, that's, that bought weed seeds and went out there and said, hey, I'm going to sow some, some weeds into my garden? How many people? And sold weeds? Like, like I, I want something to kill the, the plant that I'm, I'm growing? Watch this. What? No, no, not at all. Because weeds just pop up. It don't, it don't take seeds to make weeds. Notice now, it doesn't, you don't even have to fertilize weeds for weeds to grow up and keep growing stronger. You don't even have to water them. You want to know why there's a lot of churches that's popping up all over the place? Because people go to these churches, they can't tell if they're in the club or in the, they're in the church. But they got thousands of followers. They got people. I know I'm probably going to Facebook jail. But in Orlando, you guys know who Ty Tribbett is? Ty Tribbett used to be apostolic. Sure did. He followed to the letter of the holiness doctrine. 100%. But he kind of drifted away because, you know, offense and hurt, and things like that. Now he has a church. Pastors a church. And he pays background dancers to stand out in the crowd and to act like they're dancing and worshiping so other people are joining in with them as they have the smoke coming and they have people up here. And, and it's a big old concert. Friends, bless God, I would love to have a musician. I would love to have a keyboard player and a drummer. I would love to have a nice choir. I would love to have somebody playing the banjo and the flute and the clarinet and all that fun, fun stuff. I would love to see that. Praise God. Yes, but here's the thing. I'm not compromising to get it. Do you know why? Because, because for people to receive the Holy Ghost, you don't need a drummer. For someone to get baptized in Jesus' name, you don't need an organ player. You know what you need? You need the power of God. That's all you need. That's it. So what I'm saying is we don't have to compromise. So... They were envious of Jesus. They were envious of Jesus because Jesus had a following because he lived what he was teaching. He wasn't just talking. He was living it. And too many times we're too busy talking and not living. That's the reason why God gave us two ears and one mouth so we can listen more and talk less. You know what gives us a lot of trouble? Our mouth. Huh. Their tongue. Huh. Daddy's brother. That's right. 
You, you know how people start meddling and start gossiping? You know, you, <laughs> James talked about it. He said you wouldn't be able to gossip so much and be in everybody's business is if you got a job and got to work. Sometimes we we so busy on Facebook and we so busy on Instagram, we so busy on Snapchat and we so busy on TikTok and we paying attention to everything everybody else doing and we 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 always gossip about what somebody else doing. You know why? Because we're but pastor, you don't get it. I got a job. I know you got a job, but you're not working at your job. That's why you're on TikTok. So we have to be careful now that, that we don't allow our tongue, our mouth to get us in trouble. All right, anyway, I don't even know how I got there. I'm done meddling for the day. All right, let's keep going. Um, what verse was I on? Verse number, verse number 9. Thank you. No, verse number 11. But the chief priest moved the, the, the people that he should rather release uh, Barabbas. <laughs> but the chief priest moved the people that he should release Barabbas unto them. Notice now that the chief priest began to encourage the people. Tell them you want Barabbas. Tell them you want Barabbas. If you don't, we're going to torture your family. You better not say you want Jesus. <laughs> you know what the people did? Give us Barabbas. They had, a lot of power, the chief priest. They had too much power. Yeah. Verse 12, and Pilate answered and said unto them, what, ye, what will ye then that I should do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. So Pilate, willing to contend, uh, to contend the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when, when he had scourged him to be crucified. I want you to drop down now to John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not for but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life, that you might have it more abundantly. I'd rather you give me a thief, a robber, and a murderer than give me a chance to live. Give us Barabbas. Every time people deny Jesus and everybody, every time people say, no, I don't want to live for Jesus. I don't want to do that. What you're saying is give me Barabbas. I, I, don't, I don't really want life. Now let's drop down, please, to verse number 16, same chapter of Mark. Mark chapter 15, verse 16. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called um, Peritium. And they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple and plaited the crown of thorns and put it on his head and began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with the reed and spit upon him and bowed their knees and worshipped him. And, they, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from, from him. And put his own clothes on him and led him out to be crucified. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5. The Lord God hath opened mine ears, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheek to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from the shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. The Bible says he set his face like a flint. Anybody know what a flint is? A flint is like a stone that you would use to strike to start a fire. It takes a lot of friction and hard abrasion to cause a spark to come. Bible says that Jesus surrendered his face like a flint for them to beat on my face. He said, he said he turned his cheek for them to snatch the beard from his face. He says, I, I gave them my back for them to beat. You may say, well, Jesus, why, why would you do this? Why would you go through all that? Why would you suffer like that? Jesus, you're God in flesh. You have the power to call the host of heaven down to come save you. Why? I'm going to show you why. Isaiah chapter 53. What's the question? We wouldn't have a chance. 
If Jesus wouldn't go through it, we wouldn't have a chance. But here's here was the homework. I want you to tell me why did he go through this beating process? I'm not even talking. I'm not even talking about the joy of Calvary yet. I'm just talking about Jesus being beaten in a garden. Do you know there was a reason why he went through that? Can anybody tell me why he went through that? Why did he have to suffer like that? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Not, not, yes and no. Because in Hebrews, it's talking about we have not a high priest that um, has not been tempted um, the same we've, we've been tempted or, or been touched with the, with the infirmities like we've been touched. So, yes, yes and no. So, yes, he went through the suffering to be relatable, yes, but that's not. The, the full reason why. And no, it wasn't to bear our sins. He bore that on the cross, not, not in the hall. Psalms, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 7. Somebody read that for me, please. Isaiah who 53. Hath, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord re revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Notice now, when we see him, there's nothing that is in him that's going to be appealing to our eyes. There's no beauty left. He was beaten so bad there was... How many have ever seen somebody get beat up really, really bad to the point that it's hard to look on them? Mm -hmm. That just looking at them makes you want to cry. Just looking at them just makes you sick. I've seen, I've seen people that was beaten. I saw it, it was a guy. Um, he was a part of um, the Spanish gang in California. And he renounced his flag and he quit. He says, I don't want a part of this. And he was up in the ranks. And um, I believe he was MS, um, MS-13 or whatever it is. And he went through this. When, when, and he was like, I, I'm done. I'm done. Well, you can't really just quit certain. You can't really just quit a gang after you've be, been in there for so long. The same way that you came in is the same way that you leave. You you get beat in, you get beat out. However, the higher you go, the worse your beating is. And this man got beat up so badly. And I wish I was being sarcastic, but he had to get flown off in, in a in an evac unit in a helicopter because they managed to shift his nose from here to right here on his cheek is how bad he got stomped. They tried to kill him. When you see the man, you're like, how can one person go through that? All right. All right. Let, let's read that again. Verse one. Who who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of out of a dry ground. He have no form of comeliness. And when ye shall see him, there is no beauty that he that we should desire of him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I want you to notice something now because sometimes we go in a place where we're struggling. Sometimes we go through a place that we're going through problems. We're like, man, I just want to get through this problem. Battling with different things. Sometimes it's low self-esteem. Sometimes it's depression. Sometimes it's anxiety. And we're struggling like, man, I just want to get past this. But the Bible says that, that, that Jesus wasn't just in a phase of this. But the Bible says he was acquainted to this because he lived in this lifestyle so much that it became it became normal. See, sometimes we go through things in life. And this is the reason why I love coming to the house of God so much, because sometimes we're going through struggles and sometimes we're going through problems. And the devil will play in our mind to make us think that we're the only ones going through this. 
We're the only one battling this. We're the only one thinking these thoughts. We're the only one that's been contemplating suicide. We're the only ones that's been contemplating hurting ourselves. We're the only ones contemplating throwing in the towel. We're the only ones thinking about running away from our families. My family would be better off without me. We think we're the only ones that's thinking those thoughts. However, this is the reason why I love being in the house of God. Because as long as I can stay connected to the body, I find out just listening to people, just being around people that I'm not in this by myself. The devil's been lying all this time thinking I'm, I'm this lone ranger. And people have been lying to me, talking about, oh, I'm here for you. Oh, you're not really here for me. Oh, that's not true. There are people that are really here for you. But sometimes we don't give them a chance because we've been hurt so much. So when we hear somebody, oh, man, I love you, <laughs> what you want from me? You got an angle. It's coming. You may not show it yet, but, but you want something. You ain't no different. And we keep this guard up. Oh, let me keep reading. Surely he has, he has borne our griefs and carried our, our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the shears and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Notice now, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, spitting of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Our transgressions is our sins. The things that we do that everybody knows about, he was wounded for that. When, when, when we told that lie and everybody exposed us for that lie, he was wounded for that. When, when, we, when, we, when we did those things that we shouldn't have done and we were exposed, he was wounded for that. When, when we did those drugs that we shouldn't have done, he was wounded for that. When, when we went back to that bottle after we told God, God, I'm not drinking no more, he was wounded for that. When, when we said, I'm not going back to this joker here because all he wants is to use my body, and we went back to him, he was wounded for that. Pay attention now. He was wounded for the things that we do openly. But the Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities. A bruise is, is a wound that is under the surface. Stuff that's hidden. You can cover up a bruise. You can mask a bruise. So Jesus was bruised for our, our secret sins. The stuff that we don't, you know, you know how sometimes we tell our testimony, but we won't tell the good one. You know, you know how, you know how sometimes we're going through stuff and, and hey, praise the Lord, bro. Is there anything I can help? Yeah, I'm struggling. I need a couple of dollars. But we don't want to tell. I'm, I'm, I'm battling suicide right now. He was bruised. He was bruised for our secret sins, our iniquities. <laughs> the chastisement of his peace, of our peace, was upon him. And by his stripes. Not, not we can be healed, but we are healed. This is the reason why I keep telling everybody, if you know somebody's sick and they say, oh, I don't want to go to church because I'm sick, I don't want to get bring them to the house of God because I believe. You, and here's the thing, you don't have to believe that, that God will heal them. I believe I got enough faith to believe for you and to believe for them. Just bring them and let me pray for them. And I just believe that God, see, you think, <laughs> how many of you think, that if you were born with a disease, God meant for you to live with that disease. Notice now when, and, and I'm, I'm almost out of time anyway, so we'll just go here. Notice now when the disciples came to Jesus, he said, Master, teach us how to pray. He said, pray in this matter. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, when we pray to God, we ought to pray his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. If you don't believe that God can heal a disease, then you're saying that I want to see that disease when I get to heaven. 
couples, Holy Ghost. Because there's no sicknesses in, in heaven. So I believe if somebody comes in this church and they're sick, I believe that God will heal them because he was beaten for our healing. Your will be done in earth as it's already done in heaven. There's no sicknesses in heaven. I believe God can heal every sickness. I've seen people healed of stage four cancer. I know people, I know people that's been healed of HIV AIDS. Don't have to, you know how some people say, oh, bless God, I've been healed, but they've taken that medicine. You ain't been healed. You've taken a cover up. But I know people that's been healed. Magic Johnson wasn't healed. He's taken a cover up medicine. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes we think that these people say this and he, no, stop, friend. You got to go back to what the Bible says. The reason why people don't have faith anymore and don't believe God can do it is because we listen to the news too much. Think about this. COVID-19 hit. Oh, yeah, I know I'm in trouble now. I shouldn't have said the, the old Kobe word, but I said it. When, 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 when that happened, they were pushing the, the, the shot, the old um, Fauci ouchie. Can't really say the shot name, so I just praise God. Yep, the, 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 the Fauci ouchie. Now, notice now, pay attention. Here, here's the thing I want you to know. The whole purpose was, they says, we're shutting down the nation. It's illegal for people to have, have, have church services or gatherings. You can't even have gatherings in your home that you pay the mortgage at. Notice now, here's the next, hold on, hold on, Brian, stop, stop. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a point here. Here's the next thing they said. Not only can you not have gatherings, but they said you can't even, you can't even sing. And you can't even chant. In other words, what they're saying is you can't even pray. That's 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 banned. That's illegal. Well, well, why why is it that why all of a sudden, how does singing spread the virus? It doesn't spread the virus, but it spreads joy. It spreads hope. It spreads faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, here's how faith comes. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to I'm a, I'm a slander this, these lies across your TV screen that every channel you click to, all you're going to see is fear, 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 fear. People dying in car accidents. Oh, it was old Kobe. Volcano erupts. Yep, there, there go old Kobe. They had a shark attack in, 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 in California. Up oh, they, 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 had, they had the COVID, so they went on this rampage and started killing people. Stop the foolishness. <laughs> now watch this, and I'm, I'm going to close with this because I'm out of time and I'm already in trouble. First Peter chapter 2, this was your homework. What scripture was it that, that shows um, or talks about why Jesus went through what he went through and to show the fulfillment of this prophecy? First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto ye are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Jesus, Jesus left us an example, not for us just to read, but that we should follow his steps. Who did not, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was uh, Revealed, I'm sorry, reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but commended himself to him that judges righteously, who is, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice now. Notice now, I want you to see this transition that takes place because in Isaiah it says, and by his stripes you are healed. But Peter says, by his stripes you were healed. Why? Because we are to walk in such faith that healing isn't something that we're praying for, but healing is something that we're thanking God for. This is the reason why sometimes when, I don't know if you notice it, but sometimes I'm praying for people. I'm like, you know, praise God, you know, and I'm praying God touch this, God touch this. And then I start to thank God for doing it. Well, bless God, why are you thanking God? You just prayed for me. Because I'm believing God has already done it. 
I'm not waiting to see the manifestations of it. I'm thanking them in advance for doing it because I know it's already done. It, it's not God's will that we walk around in depression. So when I pray for somebody that God removes the spirit of depression, I'm thanking God for doing it already. You know why? Because the more you thank God, the less depressed you'll be. The more you worship God, the less depressed you'll be. Because when you're depressed, you're thinking about you and woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. But when you start to think, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiworks. When you start to think about the goodness of God and what he's done for you. There's a song I like to listen to. My kids, they laugh at me all the time because, you know, I'm not as old as I act. But there's a song that I like listening to. It was probably written in the 70s or the 60s or maybe even the 80s. It goes down through the years. God's been good to me. <laughs> down through the years, God has been good to me. All of my life, God has been good to me. And I start to think about how many times God showed himself strong in my life. Lately, I've been, I've, been, I've been buying these journals, but I haven't been journaling as much as I should. But what happens is sometimes when I, when I get down and out, I go to my journal, I start flipping through my journal, I start reading my journal. You know what my journal does? Start to encourage me and remind me of the last time I was in this place and how God began to... David was depressed. David was at a point where his men wanted to kill him. Bible says he cried till he had no more tears left. And then David, Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He says, go get the linen ephod. He said, let me go, let me go back to my prayer room. He encouraged himself in the Lord. You know how he encouraged himself in the Lord? He started to remember past victories. I remember how I killed that giant. I remember how I wrestled that bear. I remember how I killed that lion. I remember that army that, that me and five men killed. We killed a whole army. <laughs> he was like, now, now, why am I crying again? And I serve the almighty God. Friends, we need, we need to start writing down some victories. As small as you think they are, write them down. Well, I didn't really study for this test, but God gave me favor and I passed the test. We'll write it down and give God glory for it. Well, well God gave me this job. And I, I wasn't even qualified for this job, but God just gave it to me. Give God glory for it and write it down. I just started working. I just started working at this job, and all of a sudden they say, hey, we love what you're doing. We're giving you a raise. Write it down and give God glory for it. Why? Because what's happening is if you start to build memorials, which are reminders, when times get hard, you can go back to what God has already done for you. If you don't write down what God has done for you, it'll be easy to forget, and we can stay in that place. Amen. Any questions about any of that? I kind of went way off to left field, but praise God. About Jesus being beaten. The homework? Oh, the homework, the answer to the homework was 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 through 24. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 7. So next week, next slide, please. Next week, as we have concluded our road to Calvary, next week we're going to talk about Jesus dying for us. Go, to the, um, go back one slide, just hit the uh, back button, backspace button. Or... So we're talking about Jesus died for us. So go back to, yep, yeah, thank you, because I'm about to give you homework, and I don't want you to look at that and get your answer. I know, just give me a second. Me and you going to talk, Brian. All right, so, so next week we're going to talk about Jesus dying for us. <laughs> at what point did Jesus die on Calvary? That's your homework. I want you to tell me when did Jesus die on Calvary and how did he die? How did Jesus die on Calvary? How did he die, though? That's the question. We know why he died, but how did he die? Praise God. Keep on reading. All right, any questions? Down through the years, God has been good to me. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and close out in prayer. If no other questions, and we're going to be out of here tonight.
In Jesus' name. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, we love you and we honor you, O God. Lord, we thank you, O God, for the suffering that you suffered for us, O God, because you didn't have to, did Jesus, but you loved us so much, O God, that you wrapped yourself in flesh, O God. You put on a body, O God, that you may suffer for us, O God. Lord, we thank you, O God, for the many stripes that you took for us, O God. We thank you, O God, for allowing your beard to be ripped from your face, O God. We thank you, O God, for every time they spit upon you, O God, every time they slapped you, O God, every time, O God, they abused your body, O God. God, you stood there and you took it, O God, for me, O God. And Lord, I thank you, O God, Lord, I thank you that because your stripes, oh God, that you took for us, oh God, back then, oh God, that we have a chance, oh God, to be healed today, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for your mercy, oh God, because we don't deserve your mercy, oh God. Lord, we don't deserve your grace, oh God, but Lord, you extended grace to us, oh God, because you loved us, oh God, and because you still love us, oh God, and because you're still drawing us, oh God, unto yourself, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, on tonight, oh God. Pray, oh God, that you'll touch our minds, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that you'll touch our hearts, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that we will begin to build memorials in our lives, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we'll remember, oh God, your sacrifice, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we'll remember, oh God, your suffering, oh God. When we start to suffer, oh God, I pray, oh God, that we'll start to take joy in our suffering, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we'll look at our suffering, oh God, as Paul describes it, oh God, as a light affliction, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. For the things that we go through, oh God, in comparison to what you went through, Oh God, is a light affliction, oh God. So, Lord, I thank you, oh God, for our struggles, oh God. I thank you for our trials, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for our tribulations, oh God. Because, oh God, only survivors, oh God, are the ones that hurt, oh God. And, Lord, I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you'll give us the strength, oh God, and give us the mind, oh God. Give us the will, oh God, to live and to not die, oh God, and to see the salvation of the Lord, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you'll give us a peace, oh God, in our mind, oh God, that only comes from you, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, even right now, oh God, that you'll lift every spirit of depression, oh God, that's been attacking the minds of your children, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you'll wrap them, oh God, in a garment of praise, oh God, and remove every spirit of heaviness, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, as we leave this place, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you'll dispatch angels, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you'll send out warring angels, oh God, with swords drawn, oh God, to push back, oh God, and destroy, oh God, every form of darkness, oh God, every principality, oh God every spiritual wickedness in high places oh God I pray oh God in the name of Jesus oh God I pray oh God that you'll go into our homes oh God I pray oh God that your angels oh God will drive out oh God every demon oh God and every imp oh God in the name of Jesus oh God and Lord I pray oh God that you release even right now oh God worshiping angels oh God to go before us oh God Oh, God, to sit in the atmosphere, oh, God, of worship in our homes, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God, because that's what you're attracted to, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that when we get to our homes, oh, God, that we'll alter our music, oh, God, and play music, oh, God, and sing songs that will glorify you, oh, God. Lord, I pray, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, let us set an atmosphere, oh, God, in our homes, oh, God, that will welcome your presence, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Lord, we love you on tonight, oh, God, and we thank you for all that you've done for us, oh, God. We thank you for all that you're doing, oh God, and all that you're going to do in our lives, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that you'll give us safe travel to our destination, oh God. Lead us and guide us, oh God. Direct us, oh God. Order our steps, oh God. And Lord, let us never take for granted, oh God, your sacrifice, oh God. Let us never take for granted, oh God, your suffering, oh God. Let us never take for granted, oh God, the blood that you shed for us, oh God, because you didn't have to do it, oh God, but you did it anyway, oh God. So Lord, I pray, oh God, that you'll accept our worship, oh God. I pray that you'll accept our praise, oh God. God, let our worship be a sweet sound in your ear, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, O oh God. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.